Welcome to IP Talk Radio. I'm your host, Matthew Smith, and I'm here with two guests today to talk about Ericsson, its contribution to Silicon Valley, and its work with Stanford University. I'm here with Professor Nick McEwen from Stanford. Hello, Nick. Hi. Uh, and also Jan Soderstrom, who heads up uh, Ericsson Research in Silicon Valley. Hello, Jan. Hi there. Hi there. So, Jan, maybe I'll start with you. Mm-hmm. Um, Ericsson has been in Silicon Valley for about three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people... Uh, sort of questioned, well, what, what's in it for Ericsson? What's in it for the Valley uh, when we first came here? Um, a lot of the announcement was to do with how we would, you know, gain from the Valley ecosystem and work with the Valley ecosystem. Could you say how that's been going and what we've been doing and, and why we're here today talking to Stanford University? Very good. Yeah, I think uh, we, as, um, we, we, uh, we have been here for three years as a research uh, uh, entity. Uh, we built, built this up in early and mid-2008. Of course, the campus has been here since maybe a year before that when, when mm-hmm. we acquired Redback Networks, etc. But when we decided to build upon this campus and do more things than just the integrated companies, we wanted to have research and strategy and ecosystem work based here out in Silicon Valley. Um, and for, as for research, the obvious starting point for us was to go to Stanford University yep. and being um, responsible for the research within IP networking and pack, packet networks. Uh, of course, going into the Gates building and talking to the computer science guys were the obvious starting point. And we already had some connections prior to that with with uh, Professor McEwen and, mm-hmm. and uh, some of the other computer science researchers. So um, we we were scouting for good projects to work with, and we found found um, this consortium and this project uh, called Clean Slate that was sort of our starting point. Okay. And that has been a starting point. And, yeah. and, and, and Nick, I'm definitely going to ask you about uh, Clean Slate a, a little bit later. But but first of all, um, tell me a little bit about what you do at Stanford uh, and you know how you got together with Ericsson and, and what was in it for, for you guys from the start. Sure, yeah, glad to. Um, uh, Stanford is primarily a research university. We're very involved in obviously many aspects of high-tech research. My own research is in the design architecture of the internet. In the past, it was on the design and architecture of packet switches, routers, okay. gate- gateways, etc. So we're always looking for ways not only to... Uh, for our PhD students to do fantastic research and write fantastic papers, but also to engage with industry to transfer technology and have an impact on the practice. The thing that really excites me about research in whatever form that takes is to have an impact, to to make a positive contribution, a mm-hmm. change to the practice of networking. So that's what we do and that's what excites us. Excellent. Uh, and you've been working with Ericsson for, what, a couple of years now? Um, and you mentioned this project Clean Slate earlier on, yeah, and let's, mm-hmm. let's, let's get into that a little bit. Um, as I understand it, uh, what we're talking about here is redefining the, the internet, uh, IP networking and how we support internet applications and services. Uh, Nick, tell me a bit more about the project, who's involved and, and, and what, it's, what it's doing. Yeah, uh, so the project started out as a, as a brazen piece of hubris, and that was to say, if you had the opportunity to recreate the internet from scratch with a clean slate, how would you do that? Um, so uh, there are many, many practical questions to ask. For example, why on earth would someone think that you could start over when the internet has been so phenomenally successful? Yeah. And why would you even need to do that? So the thing I want to stress up front is that we we think of Clean Slate as a way of thinking about what the internet should be, mm-hmm. not as a deployment strategy. Okay. In other words, we don't think of it as there will be a day when we switch everything off, cart it all the way, throw it in a dumpster, and then start over. We don't think of anything like that's going to happen. We're really looking for ways to get to the internet that we would all like to be at in 10 or 15 years. So we have a target of, uh, of an internet that is uh, more fluid, able to change and improve and evolve over time. Mm-hmm. And that really is what, uh, what, what drives us in the work that we do. Okay. Um, redefining the internet. I- I'm glad you mentioned that it was slightly less realistic to just do it overnight. I, I think uh, it's probably something that, uh, Jan, maybe you could talk about, is the complexities of current operator networks uh, and the actual telecom side of this thing is probably what causes us to have to look at more of an evolutionary route. And Tell us a bit about what Ericsson's bring into the research in, in that aspect. 
Well, I think it's a very good question, and it's absolutely true that we cannot uh, have a flag date for a new network. We, we build a new network and we start it up. It's, it's absolutely true. Uh, I think one of the experiences we had from sort of being based in Europe and doing a lot of re research in Europe, we, had, we have been engaged in European Commission-oriented projects for mm -hmm. next generation of internet, the future internet. We've been leading big consortium about new architecture, etc., etc., um, and also engaged in, in, in some of the U.S. and Chinese uh, corresponding work. But it became clear to us maybe four or five years ago that, of course, it's not a clean slate. Of course, it's not a new network that we built. But there are fundamental uh, technologies that will slowly be introduced into the networks mm -hmm. uh, that will, over time, change it so it fulfills these new requirements for mobility or for security or for scale or for cost uh, that that we need to handle and um, um, so we came basically with with this knowledge from 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 the european union projects we knew that it wouldn't be a clean slate uh, but we saw some of the technology at stanford and, and this uh, that product called clean slate <laughs> studying it from a clean slate clean slate perspective but figuring yeah. out which technologies to use Worked fine, fine for us. I think from an end user perspective, uh, two of the things you just mentioned are two of the biggest concerns with the current internet is mm. uh, the mobility aspect. Can they take it with them wherever they go and, and have access to whatever services they need on whatever device? Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine that's a massive area of collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, but also security. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wonder, you know, perhaps the, the biggest fear a lot of people have with putting their data, their personal data uh, into the cloud, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, and the wider internet is that it's not a very secure environment. Uh, is this an area of active research within the Clean Slate project? Um, yeah, well, really the, the, the biggest part of the research activity in the Clean Slate program is how to enable the internet to, to evolve and improve for mobility to be more scalable, for owners and operators of networks to modify the behavior of their network in order to make it more secure mm -hmm. on their terms. What does it mean for them? What security levels do they need for, for, for their network? How to make it more available? How to make it more reliable? So these are all uh, aspects. The <clears throat> one, th one observation that we've made um, is that uh, we think that over time, owners and operators of networks will define more of the behavior of the network, the features in their network. Mm -hmm. uh, this term has been dubbed software-defined networks, yep. or SDN for short, and this has become a very sort of popular discussion and debate at the moment as to the extent and the degree to which this will happen. And it's been a very fruitful part of the collaboration and discussion with Ericsson, because on the one hand, we can take the ivory tower approach of you know how do we think it might evolve, mm -hmm. um, how do we think that these software-defined networking ideas will find their way into the network. And Ericsson can provide a very realistic view of what are the practical considerations, what are the restrictions, what are the things that could be introduced over time. What is a way to bring this type of product to market? So we work with Ericsson and our other partners in the Clean Slate program in order to explore those issues of how it can actually have an impact on the practice. Excellent. Uh, and this area of SDN is very interesting. Do, do you also conduct practical research? Do you have a, a dummy network set up, for example, or...? We have been introducing SDN and the OpenFlow protocol upon mm -hmm. which it's based um, into our network at Stanford, into campuses across the United States. There are okay. 10 campuses that we've actively worked with. There are about 200 campuses around the world that, have, that are exploring this in some form or other. And there are a number of, of commercial deployments that we've yeah. been helping out and advising. So, yeah, we like to get our hands dirty, get involved, get some practical uh, experience with people who are actually operating these networks. Excellent. I think the audience will be very interested in the opportunities um, beyond just the operator current network environment as well. From my perspective, there are a lot of private networks out there that could become connected in the future. I think of a, a sensor network environment, um, many different types of sensors, whether it's for uh, emergency services or um, uh, any kind of um, business or other types of clients, um, water management, whatever. Um, that sounds like an area of a lot of interest and development at the moment. Are we looking at new protocols coming out to help, or uh, is there research active there? I think uh, one aspect of that is is the virtualization, which mm -hmm. uh, is a big part of, of the next generation internet studies that is done in, under Clean Slate, for example. Uh, with these new software-defined networking, we can set up virtual network slices in the network 
that if it's architected and developed correctly and, and if time is uh, allowed to develop all these features, uh, one can foresee more of a virtual private network residing on, the, on, the, uh, on a shared physical network. Um, and, and that concept of virtualized networking is a driving force for the long-term research, mm -hmm. I guess, for, for, for Ericsson. And, and here is uh, the, 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 the embryos that we now have are fantastic starting points for that. Mm -hmm. um, of course, to have such a large-scale mm -hmm. uh, addition to current networks, um, we're going to need an incredibly fast a very responsive uh, set of technologies available. There's a lot of research in the field of optical networking uh, to try and improve uh, this aspect, uh, what would you say the importance of that is uh, in the clean slate arena? So today, big networks, big backbone networks generally consist of an IP network laid over and above mm -hmm. a optical transport network. And typically those are run and controlled by different organizations, by different sets of people with different experiences and expertise. Um, clearly, there is a long-term convergence of those. And one of the things that we've been exploring is how software-defined networks can move that along, make it happen more, more quickly and more smoothly by defining a common way to control and manage both optical transport networks and packet networks that run over them so that a single organization can optimize mm -hmm. the entire network for its, uh, for its needs. Excellent. There's certainly been a lot of uh, talk in the vendor community about converging IP and optics over the recent years, and I think the uh, uh, the physical convergence is happening in the systems, but waiting for this uh, control plane and management plane convergence has been uh, something of hot debate, so thank you for the comments there. Um, I'd like to finish off with um, some more open questions about where you see the partnership going uh, from here forward. Uh, who, who wants to start? I'm glad to. <laughs> um, you know, I think there's a building on something that Jan said earlier. Um, the virtualization in the broader sense, I think, is going to be an extremely important aspect of research and development in networking over the next few years. If you think what's happened in the computer industry, there has been a separation from the, the physical computer from what we as a user think of as the computer that we're using, the virtualized instance. And that hasn't yet happened in any you know, significant effect in, uh, in, in networking, where you can have a physical network over ab above which there appear to be multiple networks, all with very different characteristics. So for example, in a virtualized data center, that makes a lot of sense. But also in a mobile network, where you might have one physical infrastructure and multiple service providers that operate over that same physical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. There, We see the beginnings of this happen with the MVNO, the, the, yeah. the virtualized network operators. I think these ideas will, will happen to a much greater extent, such that the, the network going to my home will become sliced and separated and virtualized into multiple different providers. Uh, the Every network that we see and use in a data center, in an enterprise, in a, in a cellular network, in a Wi-Fi network, will start to be virtualized and separated, where each one of those virtual networks will be optimized for the services that it's carrying. And there is a massive amount of work to be done, research, development, deployment, and that's what's keeping us uh, awake at night and thinking about, uh, uh, for the, um, and will keep us and our graduate students yeah, very active over the next few You've years. Got to keep them busy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jan, any comments on that? Yeah, I guess I think I have two two comments to that. Uh, first of all, we expect, of course, the academic and the research uh, programs to continue to develop, and we see already, of course, new ideas from the professors coming up, not only from from uh, from Nick, but from from his colleagues as well uh, in in social networking and and in uh, in, co in cloud computing. So, and we are engaging in those as well. So we see that sort of booming up from the from the Clean Slate program, additional projects and programs that we want to engage with. So that is sort of the academic longer term thing that we want to see more things coming and we will sure engage in that as, as research, as Ericsson as well. The second thing is that we have seen this uh, uh, project, this Clean Slate project spinning off in other directions as well because we meet all a lot of ecosystem partners on those consortium meetings and we start to engage with startup companies, with other big companies. Uh, we see some of the technologies being commercialized by others that we can use for Ericsson solutions. Mm -hmm. So that's another uh, side of it that we see some of the results moving into a, a, a more uh, industrialized ecosystem that we can use, uh, hopefully use for, for solutions in the future. Excellent. Well, good luck to both of you going forward. Uh, and thank you both for joining us on IP Talk Radio today. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Please remember, if you have any suggestions for future shows, you can email us at iptalkradio at ericsson.com. 
or follow us on Twitter, Ericsson IP. And I'll see you next time.